also can enter the cylinders of the steam engine from the boiler for a number of reasons, such as the uplift created on the water body by a steam outlet to the cylinders, drawing water toward it and down it sometimes. Gresley came up with a solution to this in the form of a great and banjo dome shaped structure that allows greater transfer of steam from higher pressure areas of the boiler to lower the lower pressure near the steam outlet. However, this only reduces the problem but does not remove it. And there are also other ways water can be carried over, such as the boiler being overfilled. This is a problem as from an engineering perspective, water is effectively incompressible, unlike steam. If water gets into the cylinders of a steam engine and exceeds the clearance space and volume, it must have somewhere to go as the piston reaches the end of each stroke to avoid a sudden shock and likely damage. This damage can be as severe as the entire cylinder cover getting blown off. In many engines, the valve gear will allow for the escape of water, but not with the poppet valve gear such as that on the P2. While crews are trained to clear the cylinders of water at times when it is likely to be there, such as during startup, a failsafe is needed. This is what the cylinder relief valves are for. They are spring-loaded safety valves that will release, or relieve, when a certain pressure level is reached, in this case around 10 psi above boiler pressure. They will allow trap water to escape at the end of each stroke, protecting the cylinders and associated mechanisms. Tornado is fitted with an NNER style relief valve design, which whilst adequate as a relief valve mechanism, it's difficult to maintain due to the thread that fixes it to the cylinder cover getting stuck on a regular basis, often requiring the rock bronze valve casting to be destroyed in order to remove it. As such, the P2 will be fitted with a British Railway style relief valve, as designed in the 1950s, which uses two studs instead of the two and three quarter inch thread, thus eliminating the problem of the thread getting stuck in the cylinder cover. With these, the PT should require new relief valve castings to be made less often and will take less time in maintenance, etc. This decision was made after the forward-facing cylinder cover castings had been made for the P2 with the LNER design. To get around this, three steel adapters have been made here at DLW, which mount the LNER style threads. As these adapters do not need to be removed, they can be left in the cylinder cover castings and it does not matter if they seize and this will still allow for the greater ease of the BR design in terms of removing the cylinder relief valves. What you can see here is a cylinder relief valve casting as they arrive at DLW prior to machining. In order to machine them they must be mounted concentrically in the lathe as such that all of the faces can be brought to their final size within the limits of what is on the casting. All the casting dimensions are significantly oversized in order to allow for this. The relief valve castings and end covers have been made from BS 1400 LG4 leaded gunmetal by Manor Foundry using patterns lent by Locomotive Maintenance Services Limited at Loughborough who have restored and overhauled several BR standard locomotives and are currently undertaking the overhaul of Tornado. The valve spindles will be machined from 316 stainless steel bar and the rest of the components will be procured as necessary. Finally, each valve will be set up and adjusted to open at the required pressure using Darlington Locomotive Works hydraulic test equipment. This is a centre finding device that I will use to get the castings concentric in the lathe. The long rod allows me to use it at the same time on both the front face and the back face, as you can see here, which is essential as it has to be concentric all the way through, not just at the front or back individually. This is a relief valve with the internals fully machined. In order, I will machine this bore first, then this surface, including this raised area here. Then I will machine this bore at the back, 
because it provides a useful reference for mounting if anything goes wrong or just for later when I turn the casting round. Then I will machine this large bore here, which is the most difficult process, and including its radiuses here and underneath here, which you can't see. I will machine this valve face here, including the clearance, which also has a radius on down here. Lastly, I will turn the casting over, including getting it concentric again using this previously machined face here, which I machined when it was the other way around, to turn these, this face, this face, this face here, and this face. All six of these castings will be turned on our culture as a student, Mark I lathe, circa 1950. A wonderful little lathe that was donated to us from a supermarket who used to use it for turning their trolley wheels. Here we have a casting part way through machining. I've already machined the face for the spring cap here, and at the same time I also bored out this bore at the rear here, which exits to the cylinder block. The reason for doing this at this point is that it makes it perfectly concentric to both this face here and the later to be machined bore inside here, and provides an excellent reference for when I turn the block round to machine the opposite face and ensures that everything is somewhat concentric to each other. Once the turning is complete, as it has been on this example, the next stage will be to mount this casting in the milling machine and drill the holes for the studs here and here, and here and here for the BR standard adapters, as you can see. Here you can see what the relief valve will look like, more or less, when it is complete. It will be mounted to the cylinder cover here, to this LNER style thread, and there will actually be a cap on this end for the spring. And obviously there will be a spring and valve in here. 